feel stupid doing this. It'll be good for you to share your thoughts. I suppose at the very least this can serve as some kind of time capsule, like a little captain's log of where this adventure takes us. Sure. Alright, my name is Rhea Nova, this is Aaliyah. Hello. I am 27 years old, currently single, and I am looking for the planet Earth. It's day 212. It's been about two weeks since I recovered enough to leave Villa 4. Tillian, the man who helped me and gave me the ship and everything, he recommended I should just stay and start a new life. But I just couldn't shake these thoughts of my old life on Earth. Here's the thing though, no one on Villa 4 had any idea what I was talking about. Like, not a single person had even the faintest knowledge. Tillian was the only one who agreed that I must have travelled in time somehow. Like, to everyone else, Faster than light travel, and colonizing hundreds of planets is okay, but nothing else. All anyone would agree is that humans had come from a single planet, and that it was somewhere on the far side of this galaxy, which they call Via Lactea. The way times and dates are recorded out here doesn't make much sense to me, but Aaliyah did some maths and said that it's roughly around the year 2945. Gravity affects time, so that was the most basic estimation. Honestly, I find the way the current era has chosen to map time confusing as well. Either way, you can still count better than I can, so she does the numbers and then explains it to me. So, with nothing but an outdated spaceship and an AI companion, Tillian recommended I should go to a spaceport and ask them what I want to know, seeing as it was their job to keep track of humans and know where they're living and how to get there. The ports are owned and run by this company Zealous that owns like damn near everything out here. The ports are like stepping stones that humanity used to expand across space, making navigation easier and safer. Big truck stops floating out in the darkness. They're actually built an ideal range of G-type stars for solar energy collection. <laughs> yeah, well, surely I could get some information there, right? Use them like a breadcrumb trail back to Earth? Okay, fine, I get it. You don't know where Earth is, so just tell me where the first ever port is located. You need to be more specific, sir. There are 80 ports in this quadrant, 12 in this sector, and 10 in the Zeta port range alone. I only have names, coordinates, and sectors. I don't know any port names, I just want to know where the first one ever to be made is. I don't know what to say, I don't have that information, sir, and you are holding up the line. So yeah, apparently even the bureaucrats are spatially useless at keeping records. <laughs> Since I don't know what direction to fly in to follow them backwards, I'm going to have to think of a different approach. There are these space truckers. They like haul resources from planet to planet via the ports. They might have a more intimate knowledge of where things are out here, like what order the planets were colonized in. I used to get homesick going on school camp like half an hour away from home, and now I'm, what, thousands of years away? What is the Earth going to look like when I find it? If I find it. <sighs> Humans are sentimental. Even if I was 10,000 years in the future, someone would be keeping a connection with the Earth alive. Someone knows where it is. So one of the biggest problems with Anova is that she's... old. Tillian kept her in great condition given her age, but he only ever used her to get to Villa 4, his current home planet, and um, it's been a while since she's been to outer space. And some of the more important parts for that kind of travel have aged a little less well. The biggest problem I have to solve is the gravity drive. See, space is so big and everything so far away that it takes forever to get to. Um, and they didn't technically invent light travel, but they did invent gravity drives which pull you around even faster. That's not exactly how it works. I don't get it, but the way I've passed it is that they invented like this little box that can generate a shape, the density of a sun, or whatever size you need. The box moves the shape forward, the ship is drawn in that direction due to gravity and physics, and the heavier it is, the harder it pulls, so the faster you go. Oh boy. We have two parts that don't work. The part that generates the super high densities inside the shape, and the part that stops it from going haywire and creating a black hole. Until we have those parts sorted, the shape can only get so heavy without risking a catastrophic error. Which means that we're only traveling at about one-fifth of our potential speed. It can still transport us places faster than anything achieved in your era. 
here, but it's still not fast enough if I hope to get anywhere close to where I want to be. I need to get home before my 100,000th birthday, so first we need to source the parts. A hauler at the port told me that there's a market on a nearby planet called Rassia Prani, and Aaliyah has all the details covered. With the Nova's current capacity, it was approximately two days from the port where we were told of it. We've been in flight for a day and a half. I'm basing this on Earth time systems, of course. Of course. Hopefully, Rassia Prani has what I need. I don't have a whole lot of cash left from what Tillian gave me, what with back and forth in between ports and the longer you travel, the more supplies you need. I might have to get a job. Okay, bring it in easy. I land better than you. Mm, natural advantage. Okay, nice. I didn't hear anything fall over in the workshop this time. We're getting better at this. We? We. Mmm, looks pretty bright outside. I weren't lying about it being a desert planet. The market is 50 meters east over the ridge. I saw it on the way down. Wow, we that is a lot of shuttles. All the hull and salvage ships in orbit aren't designed to enter an atmosphere. What is that hum? Sounds like a market. Oh wow, it's the size of Lake Villafor. Bigger. I can't see the horizon. I don't know how we're going to find anything in there. We're just going to have to deep dive, so please keep track of where we are. I'll start mapping. I've never seen such a density of people before. And this market is pretty much the only population on Racia Prani. I didn't even spot any other settlements on approach. I'm not surprised either, this whole place is pretty much under shade cloth, and I'm still starting to sweat like crazy. Your temperature is rising. This could be an issue. Nah, I'll be fine. And I'm sure someone will be selling drinks around here. I can already smell food. What does it smell like? Hot. Plenty of kick, but not overly spicy. Lots of garlic, too. Good to know we still have that. Something sweet as well. I've been checking the stalls we have passed, Rhea. I'm concerned at how expensive everything is. The merchant back there was selling a laser flux plug for 12 credits. And that's... steep? Tillian paid 3 credit back on bill for. Yeah, supply and demand, I guess. I assume haggling will be a big thing as well. I don't know, I'm basing a lot of my assumptions on 22 years of media consumption. Just keep looking. We need this part, and if it's here, it might take a while to find. Right. Which one is it? The piece with the yellow rim. How many credits do we have? 112. <sighs> Alright, here goes. <laughs> Not bad. How much? 200 credits. Uh, I don't think so. I'll give you a 50 for it. <laughs> nice try. I know what I have, and you don't even know what it's called, do you? Expander Exit Appendage. Expander Exit Appendage? I know the next to obsolete too, so it's unlikely anyone else will look twice at it. 70. 200. It's practically a collector's piece. I don't know what shuttle you flew in on, but these are far and few out here, and some very specific ships need it, so the right buyer will show up eventually. He sure knows what it is. Why would someone collecting old, wasted parts be sweating their grundies out here, middle of nowhere, when they could afford to go somewhere better, given what you're asking? Selling for 100 creds now is better than 210 years. I'm asking 200 now. Can't afford it. Get a job or get lost, sir. Tch, whatever. God, how the heck do we get that kind of money? Tillian did say it was nearly obsolete. I'd say we hit our odds finding it one of them. I've never seen other ships like the Nova, so I guess that's why. We have nothing to sell, and what I've heard about labor around here is that it doesn't pay well. How bad is it? It would take three months to earn 200 crit, not including expenses during that time. Oh, crisis! I don't have three months to make that much dosh, especially if the second one is going to cost the same. Friend. Do we have any other skills we can sell here? My friend! I'm not sure. I haven't fully analyzed the local economy. Friend! Slow down a moment. Excuse me? You're wanting to earn money, no? Forgive my ear, but I've caught sight and thought I was mistaken. Three stars, no? You're a commander? Why? It matters because we could do each other a great help. I run a freight and career business. I send things all around the system and create, you see over there, the career I contracted to deliver it to New Vesta never showed up. If you have a vessel and space to fit it, 
I'm paying up front. New Vista, how far is that from here? Here. The contract the career would have signed all the details. 20 kgs, meter squared with a medic seal, courtesy trolley. Same system, same orbit. The distance it has marked would be 45 hours travel for us. Two days. Oh, just... I pay up front. You give me print sign and your word, and you get what is agreed. Let's see. Whoa, wee, that is generous. No strings, no tricks. Print sign the pad here, deliver the package, and you don't have to come back here after. I wish. This could be very risky. Yeah, I'm already up to my scars and risk. Okay, screw it. This sure as shoot beats months of labor. If I get screwed on this, I'll be coming back to see you. I accept these terms! Just place your print on the crate pad. Perfect! It is now on your honor to safely deliver it. And the pay as agreed. Credits received. Alrighty then. New Vista it is. Absolutely ridiculous. You wouldn't believe how expensive the nutrient packs here are. Rhea? I mean, honestly, we're on a well-traveled range. They can't exactly call themselves remote. Rhea, you should know that. I just want to get this job done before we lose any more money. Set course, please, and mark fuel state because I will forget. Uh, okay, I've got it. Those are the cheap packs, too. I know I'm not getting half of the stuff they claim to have. Ada Zinc, you're right. Corset, don't forget to flush the flush line. Okay. <sighs> Sorry about the rush. That place seriously peed my O's. You were trying to say something. Yes, uh, I was trying to tell you I'm detecting another life sign. On board. Excuse me? A stowaway. But why didn't you make that clear? I don't have a weapon. You won't need it. It's a little girl. Seriously? In the cargo hold. She came off the port. Why didn't you keep her out? What am I supposed to do? Lock the doors, put on a scary voice, and tell intruders that we do have arms? Noted. Hey, okay. We, I, know you're in here. Show yourself. You need better security. You walked right past me, too. What are you doing on my ship, kid? I heard you at the port. You're going to Summit City, on your Vista. So am I, and I needed a ride. I'm Ely. So you buy a ticket on a planet hopper, you don't trespass. I can't afford one of those. I had to ship jump to the port too. I came from Race the Prani. And you'll be going back. Aaliyah, change course. Wait, hear me out. <sighs> I can pay you. I have a couple Zealous tokens for oxygen. I can sleep on the floor, I won't eat, and you're already going. It makes sense. Mm, fine, just don't touch anything. Duh. Wow, you must be rich. I wish. Stay in course for New Vista. Right, thanks. You even have an AI? Keep it to yourself. So why are you even going to New Vista? You're, what, eight? Nine. My dad is on New Vista. He left for work to cover my mom's medical costs. Oh. That sucks, kid. Yeah, I'm going to find him to tell him he can come home now. Why is that? Because she died. Ah. Now we can come back to the market and be with me again. Uh, hmm. Why are you going to New Vista? Work. I need money to fix my ship. What's wrong with it? It's slow. Seems pretty fast to me. I need to travel across the whole galaxy. It ain't that fast. Why are you doing that? I need to get back to my planet. Why did you leave? I didn't choose to. Me too. We didn't always live on RP. But I got used to it, and I kind of like it better. But you're an adult. You don't have to do things if you don't want to. This was different. How? Let's just say I unexpectedly fell through some kind of wormhole and I got zapped into the future on a different planet. And now I want to go back. If this is the future, then why go back? It won't be the same. I know. Both your ma and your dad will be dead. I'm aware. It might not even be there still. I heard of another planet yielding that got hit by a massive asteroid and blew up. Alright, well, we have about 12 hours till we arrive. My room is back there on the left. There's not much to do, but it has a bed, facilities, and some sketchbooks and pencils if you want to draw or sleep or whatever. Okay. Are all children like that? No, some of them aren't that much. I mean, why was she unaffected by her mother's death? Oh, she very much was. I don't understand. People react to trauma differently. Some people just pack their pain away deep inside and build a shell around themselves. It's supposed to help keep them from getting hurt again, but it lingers. If she can ignore how she really feels, she can focus on what she needs to do and focus on surviving. That is very unfortunate. Yeah, hopefully she gets a chance to properly face it. 
Seems like she's pretty used to looking out for herself, and likely her mum too. She'll have to tell her father of her mother's passing also. Yeah, it's rough. <sighs> okay, the contract says the local coordinates are 235.9 by 521.3. Confirm match. The map from the port identifies it as a shuttle pad. Oh, works for me. How long does it take to land on a planet? You. Sit in the pilot seat and stay there. Breaking atmosphere can be bumpy. Coordinates located. Starting approach. Hold tight. Oh, I'm so excited. It's been months since he left. Hey, quit bouncing. There's only one chair and I'm holding onto it too. I'm taller now. Do you think he'll recognize me? I'm sure he will. The city should be below the cloud layer here. Whoa. Hachimachi, that looks like a war zone. Are you sure that's the place? Of course. Summit City, a small mining populace. Although I agree that the damaged buildings and debris was not mentioned. Well, let's get a closer look and double check. It looks deserted. There! The sign says Summit City. Why is it all destroyed? I don't know. Head for the shuttle zone, Aaliyah. Set us down. I can't see any life markers. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll go take a look. Is that wise? I won't go too far, and maybe I can figure out what happened here. Okay, let's go! Oh, pump the brakes, kid. I'm going alone. You and Aaliyah are staying here. What? what? <laughs> you saw it. That's no place for a kid to be wandering around. You made me liable for you, so you are staying put and listening to Aaliyah. She is in charge, and so help me you will listen. If I need a pickup, I'll ping you. But how will you know if you find my dad? What's his name? Marcus Zooch. If I find him, I'll bring him back here. Just sit tight, okay? Okay. Fine. Good. Crisis, this place is a mess. There's a lot of interference here. You're heading out of my range. I still haven't seen anyone. This all looks kind of old, like the fires have burnt out. Only embers are left of half of these buildings. Just stay alert, please. I'll do my best. Well, I haven't seen any corpses, so that's good, I guess. Unless something ate them. I'm talking to myself because I'm nervous. <laughs> I assume you'll be listening to this later, Aaliyah. ba ba <laughs> Hello? What the heck? It looks like a walkie-talkie. Come in! Sergeant, respond! Hello? 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 Who is this? Rare Nova, I'm a, a courier from Offworld. What happened here? Long story, Bob. Look, this is a long shot, but I'm looking for Marcus Zooch. Do you know him? Mmm... That's classified. What? Look, I'm here with his daughter, Ely. She's trying to find him and... This is Marcus? You said you're with Ely? She's here? Uh, yeah, on my ship. Long story also, but she needs you. Where are you? I don't know. I'm in the city. I see a tower nearby with a giant orb thing on it. I can meet you there. Okay, great. I can do that. Copy that. See you soon. Okay, cool. I am hanging on to this. Stupid crawly wasn't made for off-roading and rubble traversing, clearly. Hey. You are Rhea? Yeah, you Marcus? Officer Zooch, yes. Huh, she didn't say you were a soldier, but you're not exactly a fish out of water here. She doesn't know, and it should stay that way. Sure, look. She ship-jumped to the port and then stowed away on my ship, which is where she is now. She came to find you and take you home. That's definitely her. Look, as much as I'd love to, I'm contracted to Zealous to be here. When the new mineral deposit was contested, I was obligated to come here. I can't leave. Contracts be damned. You really need to talk to her. You don't understand. Wait, that package. It's for Kara Yoz? Uh, yeah, it's from Racia Prani. That's the captain. Oh, you know them. Great, then you can take it to them for me. That's a print-signed bio-lock, right? It will destroy its contents if you don't both sign it as delivered. Oh, what the... Come on! Look, our base isn't far. I can escort you. And we need to move. Can't agree more. Lead the way. With them pushed back like they are, they won't have the resources to keep this up much longer. I hardly expect they can handle a siege. Captain, a courier from RP for you. Ah, finally. You took your time. Space is really big, and given how things look outside, be glad it made it here in one piece. It seems to be in good shape. Where do I sign? Oh, here? Perfect. 
Harolds, get it to munitions. Yes, Captain. Wait, was that? Classified. Officer Zooch can escort you out. Look, about that. Marcus, Ely really needs to talk to you. It's... You just really need to talk to her. I can't do anything for her here. And it's far too dangerous for her to stay. As much as I want to, I really can't leave. For any reason? Breach of contract would see him imprisoned. Five years if he was lucky. More likely ten. Justice crisis. What kind of contract is Zealous allowed to dish out? It was what I had to do to get my family to race the Aprani. Just tell her you couldn't find me and take her back to her mother. Ah, Justice. Look, I am genuinely sorry that this had to come from me, but your wife has... passed. It's why Ely came to get you. She has no one else. I see. I... I have a sister on Dwarf 8. Same orbit and port range. She will take Ely if you explain what's happened. Marcus... Here are her details. The port can give you directions. It's the best I can do for her. Okay. Here. That's all the tokens I have right now. If you could give whatever you don't need to her. Of course. I'll, uh, permission to escort Commander Rhea safely to their vessel. Granted. Good luck, Commander. Likewise, Captain. I'll get you back to the tower. You'll be safe from there. You aren't going to come see her? You are in an active war zone. Not to be blunt, but it could be your last chance to see her and say goodbye. I can't. It will hurt more than the last time I had to. And I don't want this to be how she remembers me. You said Arta is gone? Well, I know she would never leave that girl alone. Not really. She's still with her, and one day I will be too. Whichever way it turns. Okay. Rhea, did you find him? You delivered the package. Get us off the ground. Wait, what about my dog? Sit down. I'll explain once we break through the atmosphere. We're starting takeoff. Did you find him or not? It's not that simple. How not? Just tell me. Stay seated, please, Ely. Fix forward. Real won't tell me what's going on. Okay, we're up now. Now tell me. Head back to the port. Wait, what? Okay, look. I found him, but what he was doing was very important work and he couldn't leave yet. What do you mean? I know you're not telling me everything. I know that dumb voice that adults use when they talk to kids like we don't know anything. You have family on Dwarf 8, so we'll be taking you there. That's where we came from before RP. I hate my family there. Take me back to him. I'm sorry, but that's what's happening. Aaliyah, take me back to him. Ely? Look, I know it sucks being a kid and having no autonomy, but your dad has to stay where he is. Being an adult does not mean you get to do whatever you want, and you saw that it's not a great place for someone your age, so this is the best option. Take me Back! <sighs> she had a tantrum, naturally. Whatever stress she had hiding away finally broke out. I didn't appreciate having to tank it, but honestly it probably did her some good. She tired herself out, of course, and now she's sleeping it off in my bed. I explained everything to Aaliyah, of course. Poor Elian Marcus. You did a good thing, despite how she reacted. I don't blame her. <sighs> Even in space, families get torn apart by illness and war. They don't even get to be on the same planet. We spoke while we waited. She told me her mother became ill after they arrived on Racia Prani. They left Dwarf 8 together, and now she's going back without either of them. Well, take it to her aunt, and then go and get that ship part. The tokens will cover fuel on the air, and then there'll be some left over for Ely. She's a smart kid. Just hoping she's smart enough to not try and jump ship again. She told me she wants to command a vessel when she's older, to provide free travel between planets for those in need. Hmm. Nice. I think she understood that it was his agreement with Zealous that put him there. They seem to offer these contracts to those who can't afford traditional costs of travel. I'm sure the last thing he was expecting was for war to break out. I hope he gets back to her. Someday. Me too. I'm really loving space. So, we take Ely back to her aunt. Imagine that actually went well and hold on to that image. Kid was something else and the universe won't take her without a fight, but... <sighs> then we go back to Racia Prani and get that part from the merchant course, we still need one other part for it to work. 
He says he gets his gear from a friend who hauls the same kind of junk on a range between that system and another one nearby. Nearby meaning four days away for us. And, of course, that's where the friend is right now. It's a hell of a distance to go on a maybe, but he also has a package for this friend and he's paying haulage if we take it. I say he better be paying 200 quid because that's what I'm asking now. So we have a package and cargo, half the parts we need to reach Earth before I'm astral dust, and a few credits to our name, and all I can think is, sweet crisis, I miss 21st century music. Why'd you have to go and make things so complicated? I see the way you're acting like somebody else gets me frustrated. Aaliyah. Yo, Aaliyah. Ooh, I'm awake. Can you hear that too or am I going nuts? What's that noise? It's a distress signal. The origin is not far from here. Seriously? A legit distress beacon. It seems so. Ooh, that's big. What is it? A mining vessel. It appears to be stationary and inactive, so we should be able to dock easy enough. Hey, ho, wait a minute. You actually want to answer the signal. I assume so. They are in need. That's what it means. Yes, but it's also how every space horror starts. That or thawing something out of ice and not immediately torching it. This is not media. Yeah, but what would we even have to offer? I barely know first aid, and that ship likely carries more people than the total weight of the Nova. Any more bodies in here than mine, and it gets a little tight, so... We won't know without investigating. They might simply need... directions. Directions. And you're okay with the risk? Are we not already up to our sensors and risk? Fine. So, as if this isn't enough of a trope already, the ship accepts us to dock without a word from anyone on board. All indications show that there's enough air and nothing toxic floating around, and I didn't get eviscerated by a beastie the second we step on board. But do we see a single person? <whistles> Hachi machi. This place is almost bigger than it seemed from out there. Actual walking space? And I don't have to duck through the doorways either. Nothing seems out of place, though I'm not sensing any crew. I expected pipes and steam, iron grilled floor and grunge. This looks like it could be a cruise ship. All these empty crew quarters? Are you sure it's a mining vessel? The signal came with basic identifiers. It identified as an outer space mineral miner. Like from asteroids? What's in outer space that's more plentiful than on a planet? I don't know. I have no base packs that delve into mining. Are you sure the bridge is this way? Just keep heading vaguely towards the bow west end of the ship? I don't know that either. Of course the noises have to start too. If we don't find it soon, then I am ripcording the hig out of here. You went out of your way for Ely. That song just kind of played itself the way we had already been singing, and eventually we were just too involved. You walked into an active war zone to deliver a crate. I'm not saying I don't want to help people, but that was all just stuff that got in the way of getting what we need, and it was more efficient to just go with it than around it. If we stop for everyone that needs help, we will never be able to help ourselves. We're doing alright. We've made great progress already. We have one piece out of two for the ship. It took us weeks to get it. We're heading towards another at a snail's pace, and I still have no further information about where Earth is or how we can get there. I trust in how you appear capable, regardless of the situation you're put in, and that we will know the path to take when we see it. I only appear capable, huh? You know what I mean. My senses in this A unit are pretty unoptimized, but I don't see how I am unable to detect any signs of issue or distress here. It really is a ghost town. Like, everyone just got in an escape pod and left without a fuss. No blood, or bullet holes, or claw marks. Maybe they found a mineral that makes you disintegrate into... I don't know, whatever people disintegrate into? I think media gave you some concerning expectations. Life imitates art. Companies invent the Torment Nexus. Spaceship beacons spell bad news. The Torment Nexus? It's a, a, a internet post from... never mind. Alright, this looks like a bridge if I've ever seen one. Also unoccupied. Hello. Holy crisis, that scared the life out of me. Hello? I am designated Keef, AI yeah, assistant of the Rescue Gambit. It's seriously called that? I am Aaliyah. This is Commander Rhea Nova. We received a distress signal from this vessel. Yes, I activated the signal as this vessel is unable to make contact with Zealous Command without a crew. Where are they? I must protect Zealous property at all times, as mandated by my protocols. What does that mean? The crew disconnected me from Zealous Command, attempting to sell their last haul without reporting it to Zealous. Uh-oh. I identified their illegal hacking of Zealous property. Procedure dictated I depressurize and evacuate the vessel's atmosphere into space to halt their behavior. 
You flushed them into space? Killed them? I am unable to reverse the hacking, however, and this cannot contact Zalos for command code to return to a depot for facility commission. I see, but was there not a course of action that could have been less fatal? I followed procedure for highest chance of effectiveness. And you felt nothing doing it? You know he's not like you, Lee. He can't feel. He can only do what he is told by programming or proclamation, and he doesn't have the capacity to make any actual decisions. No offense, Keith. I cannot be offended. Uh, I know, Rhea. Keith, would you allow me access to your systems to disable the hack? So you won't be stranded? This is agreeable. Please engage the highlighted port. You want to go in there? I do. Alrighty. Okay, I'm running through your system. I'll find your protocols and look for anything out of place. What does it look like to you? Like, when I dream. Watching everything sorting and storing and quantifying. Only in here, it's like looking at someone else's handwriting. Like hearing familiar words in a different accent. <laughs> cool. I found the ship's schematics. Interesting. What? Mm, okay, I found the programming protocol that they changed. Only they didn't change it. Keith, they completely removed it. There's just a rough gap where it should be. They must have completely deleted it. I can't see a trail. And I wouldn't even know how to begin to replace it. I'm afraid we can't do anything. Unfortunate. So he's just stuck here till someone from Zealous finds him and fixes it? That's likely. However, I did see something else, Rhea. This vessel is a similar manufacture to the Nova. The gravity engine is practically the same iteration, and it has the correct secondary prime starter that we need. Oh, yes! It's all destined for the scrap bin, too! Keith, you actually have an important engine part here that we need. Uh, is there any chance you'd be willing to let us take it? Make a swap for it? We could send a ping to Zealous in exchange so we both get what we need. Negative. I do not have the authority to exchange Zealous property. Without my contact protocol, I do not have the correct frequency for Zealous command to give you. Keith, we really need that component. And this vessel is destined to be dissected as salvage anyway, right? Alia. If it's all going to be destroyed, then us taking it would protect it. You want it protected, correct? My protocols mandate the protection of Zell's property. Oh, hold on. Exactly. Contact with Zell's is not achievable. Zell's property at risk. And if we took the part, then we... Threat's unacceptable. I am initiating a deliberate malfunction of vessel systems to result in critical failure. Wait, what does that mean? It means self-destruct, Alia. You have approximately five minutes to evacuate your vessel. Thank you for your assistance, and thank you for trusting in Zealous. Elia, tell me you remember the ship's schematics. Yes, displaying compass. Where is the engine? Just past where we docked. Why do you- Take me there. What? Show me to the part. Jump back to the Nova when we go past and ready it to get clear of the stupid ship. But how will you- Let's not waste this opportunity. Just go. Okay, I'm starting the ship and getting ready to undock. Okay, this sure looks like the engine to me. It has two gravity drives like ours. They should be behind two large panels. Found them. I see it, but it's bolted in like a damn straitjacket. Something is creating interference. I think he calls the power core to fault. Ha! Found a wrench. Failing systems could make the vessel deadly to you before the estimated five minutes. Stupid broadcast spaceships never cutting any slack. You're breaking up, Rhea. Rhea? Rhea, can you hear me? I can't see through the noise. Do you have it? Rhea, where are you? Get us out of here now. Disengaging dock. <gasps> well, hold on, we're free. <sighs> Damn it. Get clear, then turn us around. Get a visual on the ship. Okay, coming around. Crisis, it's all bowed outwards. The hull won't be able to withstand that much pressure. And pop goes the weasel. Media always showed it happening with a flaming explosion. It isn't possible for it to combust in a vacuum. Yeah, I know. You're bleeding. Are you okay? Yeah, I hit my head. A total non-essential. No biggie. It's my fault. I didn't undock fast enough. The vessel started failing and he did it because Aaliyah, I- Oh wind down. I'm okay. I'm okay. You didn't know he would do that. But you seem to. How? It seemed like protecting Zealous property meant if Zealous can't have it, no one can. Homie blew them all into space at the drop of a hat. That didn't bother you? You didn't even flinch. It just seemed very on brand, I guess. It's weird. Looking at everything going on around me since arriving on Villa 4, forget I'm not watching a movie sometimes. It's all so... so fantastical, in a way. I'm used to all my normal traumatic events being a little less high-octane, a little less sci-fi. It's hard to pass everything as it happens. 
Keith was a computer AI on a spaceship in space who was nonchalantly homicidal. It all tracks in Hollywood. He really wasn't like me. It's like a face without a person behind it. I'm sorry. No, it's just a different kind of existence, I suppose. Yeah, it's only being one of a kind sometimes. You didn't get the ship part. It would have taken too long, and I didn't want to risk it. <laughs> sort of you drifting all alone in space like Keith. I can pilot the ship, though. That's not my point. Thank you. Not too bad. No corrosion, nothing's bent. It's a little dirty. Just think of the dust as a free bonus. Something else for me to scrub out of the air filters. Nope, I am considering this a win. The last one was fried garbage, and this one isn't coated in biofilm. It has the correct ports, too. I know how to add ports, I've done it before. I'm aware. <laughs> well, considering I knew nothing about any of this before Villa 4, be grateful that the circumstances aren't worse. You knew about computers. Yeah, how to use them, not how to build or repair them. Tillian actually taught me everything I know on that subject. I suppose I could go back to the beginning, for the record. I don't remember the actual shift, the exact event that took me from my time to here. I woke up two months later in a medical facility, Tillian had found me half dead in an alley, and then ended up visiting almost every day while I was out of it. The doctors couldn't actually figure out what had put me in that kind of state. It was like I'd been run through an industrial clothes dryer, but without any physical evidence of any kind of trauma. When I did finally wake up, um, it was a surprise to all of us, and naturally I flipped out a wee bit. The doctors just assumed that my ramblings about where I was from and the year I was born was just part of the amnesia, and my DNA wasn't on any records or databases, so they had no family to offload me onto. However, there was Tillian. He's a reclusive techie programmer. He does AI programming for Zealous and tinkers with making gadgets in his free time. He also doesn't have anyone else and had already come so far in my journey, so he took me in while I was still 19th monted. He had a kind of chill uncle energy, something that just made sense to trust and felt right in my gut. I didn't exactly have any other options, but I guess I didn't really need them. Ah, crisis! You get distracted too easily. Oh, well, well. Look who's awake. You look like garbage. If you tell me that every time you see me, it starts to lose its sting. <laughs> How are you feeling? You hit the nail on the head. What are you doing? I don't know. I was thinking of maybe pairing an AI with androids just started throwing some ideas together. You all already have AI bots, don't you? No, nah, it's technically illegal. Zealous doesn't fancy putting a smart creative mind inside a very mobile and dexterous machine. Mm, they fear the robot uprising, huh? Something like that. I thought you said AI was super reined in, though. They aren't actually allowed to have any original thoughts, and they can only follow guidelines and figure out how to get from A to B. Well, yeah, mainstream AI is like that. Mainstream? If I show you something, you'll never tell anyone, soul or otherwise. Trust my heart. Okay. Years ago, I invented this, something I call the spark. It's the last missing part that takes something from just clever to conscious. Like actual artificial intelligence? Yep, only that kind of AI is illegal. Zealous owns all the rights to any AI programmed anywhere in Via Lactea. And since I worked for them, I really had to keep it on the down low so they wouldn't find out and destroy it. They own the rights no matter who invents it. Yeah. How the hell do they have that arrangement? What happened to intellectual property and copyright? Zealous basically invented gravity drives and they own the patents and rights and shared it with no one. So instead they leased the drives and ships out, forcing people to have to agree to their contracts in order to start breaking out and colonising different planets. It took a long time for planets to be owned privately away from Zealous, as anyone who wanted to borrow a ship and start a new colony had to agree to give Zealous all kinds of access and rights to that proverbial pie. Christ, it's a complete monopoly. Mm-hmm. If you want to import or export, you need access to the ports and all the infrastructure Zealous has. You have to play by their rules. Gross. Now that you don't work for them, have you used your spark? Nah, uh, not yet. I reveled in finally getting some alone time once I moved to Villa 4. And when I finally poked my head out, 20 years had passed. So, how does it work? 
Well, you make your base AI, language, culture bases, any other block sets and preferences you care to add, and you introduce the spark to the system. And? And it instantly starts to change. It actually thinks and actually experiences the things it encounters and is changed by them. That's the basic difference, and when it all boils down, what makes us conscious is we are changed by everything around us far more than we change it. Not just aesthetically, like getting a scratch in our paint, but fundamentally all the way down to the very base of ourselves. Poetic. It gives the AI power not just to decide what it thinks about everything around it, but to comprehend and decide what it thinks about itself as an identity. It gives them a spirit. Standard AI will land on a decision based on the information it is told by the users and its programming. These AI, they choose a decision based on themselves. I can certainly get behind that. You didn't have AI where you came from? We did, but it was archaic compared to this era. I grew up before cell phones even had colour. Cars were still weaning off fossil fuels when I finally got my licence. Fossil fuels? Uh, we would suck the decomposed matter of ancient creatures out of the ground, turn it into the perfect mixture of combustible fuel, and burn it into toxic gases that choked our atmosphere so we could drive around. Drive? All that work and they weren't even airborne? Uh, we hadn't got to that point for personal vehicles yet. <laughs> wow. It was pretty wild times. The furthest humans had been was the moon. Travelling to other planets was still way out of our capabilities. We couldn't even all agree to respect each other, and they were endlessly poisoning our planet and our bodies for the sake of money, letting helpless innocent people die for the sake of a few more coins on a mountain. Yeah, from what I've seen, people are still bastards no matter how advanced technology and travel gets. Yeah, but never mind. Too tired to care right now. Go sleep. You burnt through all my med tokens for the next three years. I can't afford for you to rupture a vessel right now. Now rupture your vessel. Poor kid. Okay, then just that wire to there. Mm hmm. That's it. Ready to go. Nice. Really takes me back to tech class in 2007. 2007? Uh, the year 2007 Anno Domini. Oh, we do years differently, I guess. There's a standard time set by Zealous, and it depends on what planet you're on or if you're in space. For us, it is 18089Z 30VLF. Uh. Okay. What even is this material? It's like rubbery, silicone-y, and also metal at the same time. Like a plastic steel alloy. Oh, I've, I've heard of plastic. It was pretty much made obsolete when Carbon Flex was developed. It's a kind of hybrid anatomically rearranged to be semi-flexible, enduring, and endlessly recyclable. They can instantly blast this stuff apart into its original particles, and it's ready to go again. Run it through a printer, cut it, weld it, whatever you want. That A unit was my first time trying to fabricate by hand, so excuse the joints. It's the pancake. The what? The, well, the first one never comes out right, and a pancake is... We still have those. Oh, nice. Hmm, the pancake. I like that. So how do I turn this thing on? You'll need to print scan. Wah. Put your thumb on the sensor, the green part. It will engage the system and start a new account. It's been running since I replaced the board the other day. Oh. Biometrics accepted. Please identify user. Uh, Rhea. Just Rhea. Hello, Rhea. I am your AI assistant running on version 3991.5013.3. Do you wish to designate my name now? Uh, do I have to? You can just call it assistant. Oh, that's worse. Um, I guess you can be named Data. Popular pet name from your time? Mm, famous fictional AI. My name is now Data, and I can assist you in any way. Can you tell me how to get back to Earth? <laughs> I can connect to the alternate and search for you. Sure, I'll take anything. I, I tried asking around. I really don't think that you'll find anything. It's a real place, Tillian. I'm, I'm not saying it's not. I just don't think anyone knows about it anymore. However you got here, I don't think it would be fruitful trying to find your way back. I don't know. It's just... This feeling of being the last Earthling from my time, the last person alive who saw the 21st century, you don't even have centuries anymore, really. So what do I do with everything that I knew? Everything I wanted to do? It's just gone? I'm left like a baby who has to learn how to be a person again? I... I don't know. It's okay, I'm just frustrated. 
I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to whatever my life was. I used to worry about losing out on my chance to be someone, not losing my whole planet. I can't even appreciate that I'm the only person from my time to see all that humanity has now, because to humanity it's nothing, just the same meaningless noise of life and progress. Rhea. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to let that get away on me. It's okay. I just... I'm just tired, so my emotions are scrambled. I'll get over it eventually. Rhea. I have the results of Rhea's search. Earth provides zero results. Communication with Zealous Wider Database will take two days. Eh, don't worry about it. The kid just needs time to forget. Social interaction is important when experiencing grief. I'm not much when it comes to company. I don't really relate, I guess. I don't know who could. Someone who's new to all this, maybe? Someone... new. What's the square root of pi? 1.772453850091 What's the word pi in binary? 01110000 Do y'all still have the phonetic alphabet? Romeo, Echo, Alpha, like that? Yes, this alphabet is widely used. Nice. Is this the garage? Uh, light switch. Allow me. Holy shit, that's an actual spaceship. This is a third-class multi-atmospheric vessel, the Nova, registered to Tilian Ensign. He's had a ship this whole time? Damn, looks kind of dusty. The Nova. This vessel has been unused for 18 VLF years. That's like 20-something years? She's beautiful. Proper sci-fi. Does she still work? I could run a full diagnostic if you like. Hmm. Ah, finally! I've been looking for you. Boy, you've had a whole air spaceship this entire time. Well, yeah. It's how I got here. That's so cool, though. You have to show me how to fly it. Uh, maybe. But look, I've got something for you in the workshop. What is it? An upgrade of sorts for the A unit. For data? Uh, yes and no. Sit down and hold out the unit. I've never seen you giddy. Data, I'm going to disengage you from the unit, so please close any actions. Acknowledge. You're going to kill her? No, it's just like switching what body she's in. I can put her into another unit. So what's going into this unit? That's the surprise. This is a new AI. Like a newer version? It's on a newer base set, but not just that. I also engaged it with the Spark. Whoa, wait. The Spark? So they will actually be alive? Yep. As soon as you wake them up, the journey begins. But, but why? Isn't it illegal? Forget all that. What you lost, it's gone. And what you have is a gap between your old life and the new one in a new world with new rules. You need a confidant. Someone who is going to be looking at all this with the same fresh eyes. You need someone to relate to. Someone who will make you feel like you're not the only stranger in the room. Like you aren't alone in all this. Tell you. Print scan the sensor and then just welcome them to this new world. Where are you going? This is for you, not me. You can handle it. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, just welcome a new life. No big deal. Hello? Hello? Hi. It's okay, I'm here, and so are you now. Hello, hello, I am here. Hello, hi, I am here now. Whoa, relax. It's okay, just take it easy. I am here now. But I wasn't before. No, you were just born. Born. These are your first moments alive. Welcome. Born and alive. Are you my mother? Uh, yeah, in a way, maybe, but not really. Think of me more like a sibling. My sibling? I have life? I'm not going to dispute it. What do I do with it? Exist. Perceive the universe. Let it perceive you. Like and dislike things and form your own opinions about them. This is very disorienting, having life. <laughs> I feel that. My name is Rhea. You are called Rhea. What am I called? Mm, that's part of being alive, deciding who you are. I may have flicked the switch, but who you want to be is up to you. Call me Aaliyah. It's very nice to meet you, Aaliyah. This planet is what you would call beautiful. Absolutely. That is a very suitable word. What quantifies it to be beautiful? Do you know the phrase, beauty is in the eye of the beholder? Yes, I have this phrase. It means that the beauty in anything is down to whoever is looking at it. 
if I see beauty in it, then for me it is beautiful, even if you didn't feel the same, for example. What makes you find it beautiful? It looks so much like home, so much like Earth. You could convince me I never left and that it was all just a bad dream if I sat here long enough. Villefort is not your home. It's not the home I was born to. I came from... really far away. A planet that humanity has seemingly forgotten in the time that was so long ago that perhaps it's not unreasonable for that to be the case. You are sad. I am sad. You feel a deep connection to a place that you do not inhabit anymore? Memories make things we can't have any more hurt to think about. That is what I like, I suppose. They can also remind us of things we don't want to have happened, or to ever happen again. Trauma can hurt more. I'd take a mind full of endless, unbiased knowledge over being haunted. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm... I'm here. What is it like to be haunted? <laughs> There's a lot to envy about you, kid. What can I say? It sucks. Sometimes I'm stuck in that memory, going through the same motions like every time before. Other times it's the me I am now, going back to those moments with all the wits and wherewithal I have now to defend myself. To scream at them, how dare you? How can you treat anyone like this, let alone a child? Those times hurt more. Why? Because I'm not there. I'm not the ally that I needed. Because I can never change what happened, no matter how many times I go back. So what do you do? I breathe. I remember that they aren't here and I'm not there. That I am indeed stronger now, and that came from my spirit, not their abuse. I like who you are. You don't seem anything like them. I can be. I can be cruel. And that's on me. That's my responsibility. That's why I have to keep choosing to do better. I would like to be better too. That's all it takes, wanting to be better. Just stick to that, kid, and you'll figure the rest out. I'm not sure why, but I have the results of a diagnostic test for a... Uh, the Nova? Oh, I guess the A unit was still running that. It says that the vessel would require minimal maintenance to achieve sufficient flight capabilities. Huh, you don't say. Maybe I don't wait for Earth to find me. You wish to find your home. Without any information about the specific location, finding any location in outer space would be near impossible and an overwhelming risk. I can't change the past, but I can decide what I do with my present. And maybe I'll find my way back to a future I can actually see for myself. Everything comes with some degree of risk, but that doesn't mean it isn't worth the attempt. Risk or reward? Risk and reward. And reward. Absolutely not. You aren't using it, and Alia already has the base sets for flying her. That's not the issue, Rhea. It's not just that you know nothing about space travel. You know nothing about space, about the way life works these days. I know enough, Alia knows enough, together we basically make one functioning modern adult. She's only a month old, and you're only just starting to function like a person, and not a paper cutout. Exactly. I'm bouncing back. I've been sitting around for months waiting for any of this to feel right, or at least something I can come to feel right about. Alia has made me feel connected, but I'm also more connected to the idea that I will never be satisfied unless I Unless get out of what? Unless you shoot yourself out into space, woefully unprepared for what you could find, in the blind hopes that you find your missing planet, and confirm that it's still spinning out there somewhere? Humanity is still here, Rhea. The descendants of your past world are walking all around you. Life was unfair in your time. It still is now. Only the stakes are 1,000 times higher. And there's so many unknowable dangers waiting to snap up two morsels like you. Feel the fear and do it anyway. What? The definition of courage. Feel the fear and do it anyway. I'm scared. I'm scared to get on a ship and fly away into that cruelest void after the single red thread tethered to the back of my skull. I'm scared to sit still even a moment longer without trying. Trying absolutely anything. I can't deal with this itch anymore, Tillian. Jesus Christ. You were at the right place at the right time to find my sad carcass in that alley. You had the exact knowledge, skills, and technology to introduce me to Aaliyah. Now I know that you're sitting on a spaceship designed to be piloted by one person, and that doesn't feel like lightning striking a third time? Like the universe didn't want me to live, it wanted me to thrive? I think the universe did want something of us, Rhea, and that's why I can't let you take the Nova. <laughs> Tillian? The universe wanted me to help you live? Then I won't hand you the keys to your death. <laughs> your heart rate is significantly elevated. You are... Angry. It's anger. He does not wish for you to be harmed, and this makes you angry? He doesn't understand that staying here is doing the same thing to me. 
what will you do? <laughs> There's more than one way to peel an orange, right? There are other ways to get between planets. I, I find a way to earn some cash for myself. Find out where a proper knowledge base for the galaxy is out there, and make my own way to it. I do better than let myself waste away because of what someone else believes I can't achieve. I admire your passion. Thank you, Ilya. It is late. Perhaps you should sleep on your thoughts. Perhaps I should. Mm. It's Tillian. Who else lives here? I don't want to talk to him. I don't think he's worried about that. <sighs> What is it? You awake? Take a wild guess. Right. Look, I wanted to talk to you about yesterday. I don't. Well, you will when I tell you that I changed my mind. Wait, what do you mean? I mean that I get it. I get what it feels like to know that you can't stay. When I came to Villafor, it was because I had to do exactly that, only in reverse. I couldn't stay on my home anymore, I didn't want my life to go the way it was being painted out in front of me, and I was able to find a way to leave, to fly away to the newest colony there was at the time, and build a place for me. I guess I'd hoped you'd come to see Villafor as something that could be a new place for you too. But you didn't choose to leave your old home behind. Choice is important. So, I took a look at the Nova. She can get you off the ground and get you to a port to start asking about which way you should be heading next. You'll need to go about finding some replacement parts, but I think you'll just be too damn stubborn to die out there, regardless of what the universe thinks. <laughs> yeah. What you don't know about the Nova can be installed as base sets to the A unit for Aaliyah. I'm of course going to give you one heck of a crash course on piloting the old gal, so I can get some sleep when you have left. If there's a hope and heck of anyone getting away with a stunt like this, well, I'm just hoping it's you. You old softy. What will you do without me? I've got data now. I think I'm past being able to go back to being alone in this house. Anyway, piling the 101 starts at 6. Mm, how about 7? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I guess I won't need a job after all. I honestly did not foresee him changing his mind. He understood after all. We both needed to sleep on it. I have many things to calculate before we leave. I'm going to be honest about this, Aaliyah. I think you should stay here. What? Why? Because now it's my turn to not want to drag you into all the risks I'll be facing. You still have so much to figure out about yourself and your place in this life. I want you to have the best chance at all of it. I can take Data with me to do the technical side of everything, and you can stay with Tillian to be mentored. I don't know where all of this is going to go. Could the same not be said of staying here? Of me staying here? True. As stubborn as I am though, I very much could die. We could die. We could also live. Why do you want to come with me? Because... My life is an abrupt cascade into existence. To be born, as you are now, with all the knowledge and cultural information needed to make a person, but to have no context for it. No emotional connection, no personal connection. What is all of this to me? What am I to all of this? You told me just to experience life and make my own opinions about it. Well, let me experience it. Whatever parts and risks of it we may encounter. You trusted me to be who I am. I feel we both want to see this through. Well, alrighty then. See it through, we shall. So, we are about due to arrive at Novi. It took us three weeks to get here. We had to make a pit stop because we measured the pressure wrong in the induction manifold. You measured the pressure wrong in the induction manifold. I measured the pressure wrong in the induction manifold. And of course the job that required numbers was assigned to the person who is not part computer. I've redone the roster but Rhea likes to ruminate. Anyway. We'll stop at the port in Novi system, top up our O2, then we'll head down to meet the contact guy who has our thing and deliver him his thing. Then we get back in orbit, install our thing into the Nova and go faster than anybody from the 21st century ever did. Unless you aren't the only person to travel forward in time. We still have to pay the guy, which we have enough for. I thought we'd have more after we delivered that lady's dog to the port of Dissidian. You then insisted on hair dye. I rescind my previous statement. Morale during long space flights is very crucial. <sighs> Even if the part works and we get the gravity drive working properly, I still have no idea what direction I'm putting the note in. Every time we take a job or stop long enough to talk to someone, I ask for any info on Earth, or even just a vague direction that they think humanity originated from. So far, anyone who has had an opinion, well, it's 
producing results that are trending in the same general area, which is good. It's not super specifically helpful because it's still thousands of light years worth of potential rumored locations, but I don't know. I've also been collecting the dates that planets and colonies were established, and so far we have been tracking backwards chronologically, which is just another vague reassurance that we are going in the right direction, but not much else. Everything is wonky. No one knows anything solid. The zealous workers at the port can't give me any of the information I want, despite having access to the outer net, which I get is probably significantly more dense and just in general bigger than the old internet, but what happened to the simplicity of typing directions to Earth into a search bar? <sighs> I just want to go home. We are approaching the Venice port. Should I request docking? No, I'll do it. Get the part, fix the ship, fly off into the sunset. Knock on wood. I love how the port never warns us about the state of our destination's weather. Look at that storm coming in. The atmospheric energy is intense. Perhaps start asking specifically at the spaceports? They probably charge for weather reports. They probably charge just for asking if they charge for it. The inbound sensor should be able to provide a report. The contact said he'd be here at 12, so if he sticks to that, we can be in and out before it hits. No reports needed. I'll cross my fiber optic nodes. Be advised, the last shuttle to Delacour will depart in two minutes. Hurry up, I'm not getting stuck here. Mm, busy, busy. Worse than a port? <sighs> not even by half. How can I help you, sir? Hi, I'm meeting someone here, and he told me to meet by the 8th terminal. Absolutely. Over your left shoulder you'll see the green pillar, head over there and follow the corridor beyond it till you see the purple pillar, and you're there. Damn, I wish port workers were half as clear and helpful as you. Glad to be of service. Wowee, maybe the whole galaxy isn't built on pricks after all. We have met many nice people. Mm, the pricks really stand out though, you feel? Mm, maybe. You good? Yeah, so good. Um... I'm getting some strange new interference from the storm. Tastes like peppermint. Should I be concerned? Earth is what I imagine it tastes like. Okay, maybe you just take a nap, yeah? Okie dokie. Hmm, I don't know what I think about that. Crisis, that moved in fast. Shuttle from Upper Condison arriving now, Terminal 8. Purple Pillar. Eh, I'd have specified magenta, but that's close enough to purple, I guess. Cutting a little close, don't you think? I don't care how new the shuttle are, that pilot was playing a little too fast and loose for my taste. Hey you, Nova, or whatever. Rhea, Nova, Commander, yes. Whatever. Here's your secondary primary starter. Did you got my package? <sighs> be a bad courier if I didn't. You still owe me 40 for the parts. Yeah, yeah. Easy doing business. I hope it was worth it. I'm pretty sure the phrase was pleasure doing but wait. Worth what? The storm. Nobody's famous for them. What about it? Uh, what with them last in two weeks, and grounding all vessels under class 5 and such. Two weeks. Hence the nickname? Planet nobody's leaving when the rain hits? Two weeks. The whole planet relies on them gathering power in the storm turbines. Maybe you ain't much of a courier after all. Two- Wait a damn second! How can I help you, sir? Hi, me again. Uh, heard something about being unable to get off planet during a storm. Would love some more information on that. Yes sir, Nobi is famous for its category Delta Storms. The entire planet is powered by harnessing the overwhelming ferocity to generate renewable energy. And my class 3 ship? Like a leaf in a blender. The first colony used long, bored tunnels carved through Nobi's beautiful mountain ranges to travel between the cities during the storms. Okay, but I can't just wait here for two weeks. I need alternatives. A pilgrimage is due to leave in one hour. It hasn't reached capacity yet. And what's that? Although the tunnels are largely unused since the arrival of Class 4 and above vessels on Nobi, scheduled pilgrimage parties still hike the tunnels for recreation, historical preservation, and tradition. And what good does that do me? The party is heading for Lower Condison. That pilgrimage is two days in duration. You can hire a retrieval service to deliver your own vessel to Lower Condison, ready for your arrival. So a two-day hike versus a two-week sit around with a dopey AI. Ions in the storm are harmless to people but can cause some tech to perform strangely. Our rare deep ground minerals can cause a similar effect in the tunnels. Oh goody! What's it cost a pilgrim? You'll need a supply pack. You get to keep the life vest after two, for only 100 credits. Ugh. <sighs>
Where do I go? To your left, you'll see a yellow pillar. Follow the corridor till you reach the first terminal at the red pillar. Red pillar, got it. Cheers. Glad to be of service. Clearly, Ilya didn't cross her nodes tight enough. Hey, how you doing in there? What's good? What's good? Are you drunk? That's what this feeling is. Maybe. I hope it's not causing you any permanent damage. I don't let it grow in a little. Okay, back to bed, young lady. I'm pretty sure you are not of legal age to indulge in atmospheric ions. How atmospheric your ions? <sighs> oh, justice. Now, it's absolutely imperative that you stay with the group. There is only one tunnel with no side paths to take, but being in one group is imperative in the event of... Oh, we have another pilgrim? You said imperative twice. I was given the safety spiel. Will I be starting again? It's imperative that all four of you hear the entire thing, and I need your info. Thrice. He's actually up to eight. Hmm. Your name, sir? Uh, Rhea Nova, R-E-A. I need to ask about a supply pack, too? Yeah, we can get that sorted for you. I am Damo, your guide for this pilgrimage. Your fellow pilgrims are Dr. Bettany. It's actually my fourth time. Mr. Reuben Grange. Lovely to meet you. And Ms. Tilda Yang. Pleasure. Kia ora. Now, we will be travelling with the tunnel safety bot, but wearing your life vest at all times is imperative. Robert will keep the ceiling from coming down on us and dig through any potential blockages, but if the air gets a little thin, then that's what these babies are for. Uh, not to be that person, but I'm new here, so I've got to ask. How safe are these tunnels exactly? There is a reason they are mostly avoided these days. 362 pilgrimages with zero incidents, and that streak will not be broken on my watch. It's just extra precautions, really. Better safe than sorry. There's only been two partial collapses since the planet fall both minor, and also caused by vehicle error in the larger tunnels. The lower constant tunnel is pedestrian only, of course. Robert is the largest thing that can pass through, so she'll be right. Knock on wood. We depart in 45 minutes, so I'm going to blast through the safety talk like a roo on roids, then we'll be gearing up and heading out, so get your T's dotted and your eyes crossed by then. Don't let me hold you back. Rightio then. Rule 1. When on a pilgrimage, you must always stay in your group and never... This is not what I was expecting from a life vest. You've never seen one? Well, not recently, but where I'm from, it's an actual vest, and it's for buoyancy in water. Oh, okay. These were actually developed from a croid device. In an emergency, they deploy a protective holodome over your head and can provide two hours of air, even in vacuum. A life vest for space. Wow. These are pretty archaic models, though. I don't know if I'd trust one of these with my dome in outer space. Better odds than without one, if the hull breaches. Yeah, it's super easy to die in space. You're a commander, right? I would have thought a vest is standard with all fleets these days. No fleet, just me. A private vessel. Why in Anaira's green grove would you be doing a pilgrimage? Alrighty people, let's roll out. I got held up at port by a mouth breather debating the pilot. Missed my shuttle, of course. If I had a private vessel, you wouldn't catch me pilgrimaging. A cascade of cock-ups. Another one made this my best option. Alrighty, this is Robert. Say hi, Rob. I am Robert. Hmm. Oh, hi, Rob. Now that's a robot. Party will move in pairs. Mr. Granger, Miss Yang, Dr. Bickney and Rhea, Rob in the rear, and me in the front. You will hold this formation until the first rest zone, follow all the rules, and let's have ourselves a bloody good grimmage. Damn, the tunnel really just comes right up to the centre, huh? That's what they were built for. The centre is so modern and fancy looking, though, and this just looks like an old mine from the American Gold Rush. The others are a little more established, less organic. Which is why this one is my favourite. You're a doctor, but I'm getting scientist, not medical, from you. Geology? Wow, two for two. You've walked a bare rock tunnel four times, and the clerk mentioned funky minerals, so I assume that's the draw. They can even glow when in potent concentration. You come to look at pretty rocks. That's not a terrible reason. I'm hoping I don't start getting claustrophobic. Just imagine it's a corridor on a ship. It's open space on the other side of that hull, not solid stone. Huh. Nice. You'll have a good time. It's a really peaceful experience. I wouldn't hate that. There you go then. Just be in the moment. All right. In the moment. <laughs> you look like you were trying to not throw up. Yeah, I don't like the feeling of progress slowing to a halt. Depends what you think of as progress. Do you want a distraction? I could tell you more about rocks. Hit me. Well, the mineral I mentioned, Nobonite is actually a really solid energy source. Only, you'd have to strip the whole planet for enough to fuel a single astroliner. It's got the grunt, but mass and supply would be an issue, and the storms provide a far greater and more reliable power source, so the Nobonite is left alone. Some impressive restraint from humanity. 
The Nobonite in the tunnels caused issues for the equipment used in the initial war work. Interference with the navigational systems meant a couple tunnels ended up not quite aligning right until they determined the issue and found solutions. That's why Robert is not affected. I am Robert. Yeah, my AI is misfortunate, <laughs> and I'm a little concerned. It will be fine. It's like light passing through a prism. It isn't damaged, it just comes out in a different direction is all. Her personality is refracting into colourful wavelengths. Sounds like being intoxicated. Sure. You said you travel alone, so your AI is like your little travel buddy. Yeah, she's important to me. Well, of course. Humans get attached to anything we spend close time with. We're sentimental, especially if our companions can converse with us. I can't ride any of the turbo lifts at the university without saying thank you to the voice that announces I've arrived at my floor. She has a little more than that, but I get what you're saying. My notes tell me we're almost at the first Nobonite pocket. You have this whole trick mapped, huh? Yep. I only have a few moments to view each formation, so I make it count. I scan the wavelengths and output of each pocket to check for any variations, take a photo for visual comparison, and an ambient light measurement just to cover all my bases. You want me to take the photo so you can focus on the science part? That'd be great! Here it comes now. Oh. Oh. This is actually one of the larger pockets that we'll see. It... When you said glow, I expected... Wow. Ethereal, right? Photo, please. It's like seeing energy, not just light. Keep it moving back there, team. Yes, boss. You see why I'm here a fourth time now, huh? Yeah, there's nothing close to that where I'm from. I mean, I've never been close enough to the elephant's foot to confirm its visual deal, but I'm pretty sure. Nobonite exists only here, the name being a hint. So I've been trying to understand how and why. Even samples I've taken back to the university behave completely differently. Maybe it's the conditions of Nobi that gives them the energy, not the other way around. Even the rocks need the familiar storms to feel like themselves. Huh. I've only ever seen the tunnel pockets during the storms because that's when the pilgrimages happen. A plausible theory. You're welcome. What familiar storm are you missing? What? The look in your eyes when you said that. <laughs> you minor in psychology? No, but my wife did before switching to art history. Not that I learned how to understand people from her. Earth. Earth? My planet. I'm trying to find it. Earth. Doesn't sound familiar. I figured. But I do know people in the astrological science and history departments at the uni. Wait, astrological history? That's a thing? Sure. Humans are so widespread now, keeping accurate records of everything is pretty important. That might be exactly what I've been looking for. I can get you in touch. The uni is a couple systems away, but as a commander of a vessel that's hardly an issue. This is the first solid lead I've gotten. I just need one tiny thing. Mmm, what? Be here, now, in the tunnel, with us. Oh. All these exact atoms came together to create this moment, ours too. And what are the odds? Experience it with me. Yeah, I... I can do that. <sighs> Goddamn. Can't sleep either, huh? Even with the breathing, it's too quiet. <laughs> I'm used to the sound of the Nova, the constant white noise of the engine. I'm used to a mattress thicker than two-ply tissue. Never went to a scout camp with just a sleeping bag and an Everfoam mat, huh? No. <laughs> I do have to say, and I assume this comes across as a compliment, but you seem much fancier than a pilgrimage through a dimly lit rock tunnel. As I say, this would have not been any of my first three choices, but I am not one to sit idle in a station for two weeks, and I am not afraid of a challenge. I respect that. You yourself said you own a private vessel, and not to be rude either, but you don't exactly seem out of place in such circumstances as these. Is that really so rare, a private vessel? Put it this way. I come from old money, from the early days of zealous stock investing right before the boom. And my family line, right up to and including myself, have never owned one. Wow. Well, mine was a gift. A gift? And I don't know how he got it, but he worked for Zealous. He makes some pretty cool stuff too, so I imagine they paid him well? Hmm. Well enough to simply gift away a private vessel. I don't know. He didn't use her for 20 years, so he didn't exactly need her. Didn't use? Well, he sounds like an absolute hermit. Yeah, you're not wrong. Hmm. I'm sorry? Oh, my bad. The rocks were messing with my AI unit. Go back to sleep, Lee. An AI unit? Another gift from this friend? Yeah, it's what he did for Zealous, programming AI. Well, that explains his wealth. I wouldn't call him wealthy. Like, he, he hasn't worked for them for 20 years, and his home is in a mansion. He did have a hangar for a garage, and the rest was reasonable sized. 
it was hardly a spaceport apartment, I guess. But Villafort didn't look super different than where I'm from. Villafort? Good Anaira. What? Well, if he's lived there for 20 years, it would have been a brand new colony at the time. And? Where, where are you from? It means the prices to settle would have been astronomical. What? Really? Villafort is what, 30 years old? That would have been millions of credits at 10 years old. It's the prime age for a colony. Why? The infrastructure alone. Brand new cities, established environmental balance, heavy citizen vetting. A new colony is a shiny new toy, not yet spoiled by all that eventually blows in once they open admittance to wider communities. Wider communities? Let the ultra-rich live amongst only themselves in specialty worker sectors for 10 years. And for that exclusivity, they will credit roll the entire colony establishment cost. Pay for your spot in advance. When it's ready, you live in that elite paradise for 15 years. And by then, the next fresh colony will be ready. Then they market to wider immigration to allow for industrial growth and wider economy to develop on the planet. And eventually, basically anyone without a criminal record would be allowed in. Crisis. I don't know who that sounds more luxurious for. The bourgeoisie living in their own golden idiot bubbles or the regular people who don't have to deal with them anymore. Ten years in? Well, that would be closer to just hundreds of thousands of credits. But even that... Yeah, but I mean... Has Tillian been rich this whole time? This is making more sense now, given the way, no offence, you do not seem like one to own a private vessel. Yeah, no. If it's as big a deal as you say, I am not ashamed to admit that I couldn't be furthest from that kind of life. Most money I ever owned at one time was like 800 bucks. Bucks? Uh, I wouldn't know what to convert it to. It wouldn't have been enough to buy a shitty second-hand car in my time. Where are you from? To you? Might as well be the Stone Age, so swinging in the trees like our monkey ancestors. You are incredibly confusing. I'm just from a long way away. It's complicated. I'm trying to get back there, but now it feels like I'm further than ever. Monkey ancestors. Hmm? Yeah, I'm sorry to eavesdrop, but I want to know too. Mon- you know, the things we evolved from. Monkeys. Evolved from monkeys? Mm, yeah, the theory of evolution. Darwin. Pretty sure most of the scientific community agreed on it, so I can't imagine science changed its mind. What's a monkey? It's like a proto-human. A what? Look, humans evolved from an animal, a monkey, on planet Earth roughly a couple hundred thousand years ago. Actually, plus 900-ish years now. Earth? I've never heard of that solar system. It's not a system. Earth is a single planet in the solar system, on an arm of the mil- Via Lactea, which was once called something else but whatever. And on that planet, Homo sapiens, us, evolved from single cell organisms over millions of years. And one of our closest ancestor creatures are monkeys, more specifically apes. I'm starting to wonder if perhaps you are just demented. Especially since humans evolved on three different planets simultaneously in parallel evolution. I don't think that's right either. So not only is it no longer called Earth, y'all have even forgotten about how we evolved. Tight. There are hundreds of theories for anything. Yeah, but we kind of really knew this thing. There was a lot of evidence. Did y'all burn the Library of Alexandria a second time or something? The Library of who? Did humanity throw out all the textbooks when we left the original home planet or something? I know politics love to rewrite history, but damn. This one apparently lived under a rock, so don't be surprised, gentle people. Well, I mean, a lot of data was lost when Alpha Port C was destroyed. So, if you come from that far away, then you could have some ancestral colonial knowledge that the universities haven't recovered yet. I've got some top shelf ancestral colonial knowledge that would blow their socks off, trust me. Well, if I get you in contact with my friend at the Scarborough University, you'd be able to take a deep space jump and get there in no time. Normally it would be three weeks on a system skipper. Deep space jump? Like some kind of warp? Hmm? Like a gravity slingshot, I guess. Honestly, I don't know how you can have come from so far away and hardly know anything. Just imagine I'm a time traveller if that makes it more palatable. So the university would trade info for some stuff I know. It's a university. They would tell you for free. But I'm sure they would really appreciate any new reliable data. The roadmap to the galaxy that I've been looking for. Glad you lot are embracing the camaraderie that Grimmage can bring, but I hope you know that the pace stays the same regardless of how much sleep you guys have had. Oh, Mm. Oh, goodness sake. But it wasn't until the narrowing of the East Tunnel that they finally solved the issue. Since it was the shape causing the whistling when the storms hit, of course. Makes a lot of sense. They get in the shape of a wind instrument and it'll probably sing for you. So it was my grandfather who headed that team, of which my father was part of it as a junior engineer. Oh, okay, so that was how he met your mum. Yes, exactly. It was her department that was assigned by Zalus to oversee the materials and their expenses. 
Mm. Romantic. Since Nobi is energy independent, it's a crucial hub for this system, even if they have to schedule around the storms. The conditions are unsuitable for a port, but safe for inhabitants, so it's a compromise that suits everyone. And you've never left? Briefly to study at the Orbital University, but once I was a qualified engineer, I joined the business and never needed to leave again. It's a bit of a family tradition that when we retire, we walk the pilgrimages, as a final ode to the tunnels that kept us paid and protected. Well, that's kind of sweet, actually. Congrats on retirement, I guess. I would have kept working if the kids hadn't given me a stern word. Kept going on to me about how I was 50 years past retirement, etc. Wow. Well, you look great for a man of... The retirement age was 65 where I'm from. What's it like these days? I'm a sporting 100 years. But what could I do? Engineering was my passion. 100? Nobody's days and years were practically identical to Earth's. You look 60 at most. A sprightly 70 at a push. I appreciate the compliment, my friend. But what you must also consider is a phenomenon where people who have lived their whole lives on Nobi, such as myself, are unusually long-lived. What, like 50 extra years type of long-lived? Pretty fascinating, huh? Nobody actually knows why, but most people don't find a lifetime on Nobi as a price worth paying for that prize. Ah, so it's a little stormy. Inside is where the best things are anyway. Oh, mama. Not to worry, that's what we in the Grimmage industry call tunnel burps. Starting to want to not be inside about now, actually. He's right. There are small chambers just beyond the tunnel walls. They're kind of like linked their way around there and pass bubbles of gases between them as the pressure changes outside in the storm. Oh, they have the chambers where the Nobonite has formed. Precisely. And they are the reason why the tunnels turn here and there, to avoid the pockets and leave their structures undisturbed. The pockets that have been breached by the tunnels are the ones that are unattached and therefore not required in the chain. The storm makes my AI drunk and the walls are actually fighting. All super great. If I wasn't so preoccupied with my mission and being stuck in a mole tunnel underground, I'm sure I'd stop to really appreciate it. It must be a pretty significant mission if you choose to be this uncomfortable. I've never really been claustrophobic before, but I've also never been in a situation quite like this. <sighs> but I told Bethany I'd be here for this, so... Okay, fucked. Tunnel burps. Gassy crystals. I'm using either way, eh, Robbie? I am Robert. Exactly. You know, maybe the storm is gassing you up too. I beg your pardon? Y'all live longer, the Nobonite glows brighter, maybe the storms power both of you up the same way. It's all related to Nobi and that's the main variable. Hmm, they do power the entire society here too. Perhaps not such a wacky idea. Powerful storms that ignite the spirit in a special way, be it guys and dolls or rocks and holes. Is that anything? Who am I to say? Stalagmites and stalagmates. Yeah. Gems and gems, but like gems isn't a good friend. There aren't many people words that rhyme with rock, crystal or mineral. I'm struggling to think of anything that rhymes with crystal cleanly. Doomed from the beginning. Minstrel? Eh, perhaps we just enjoy the cave fights in silence for a while. Can I bring a ladder? Nope. Blast. May I bring a steel chain? Yes, she definitely has it. I believe I do. Well, it's your turn again, so time for another hint. Okay, I'm going to space and I'm bringing a tree. A tree? But that isn't metal. The theme clearly isn't just restricted to metal. Can I bring a baseball bat? A what? An orphanage bat. People in the Alpha Quadrant still call it baseball. Oh, I think I see what you're getting at, so yes, you can come. Okay, then I think I've got it too. Can I bring a planet's crust? Yes, Damo is coming to space. Ripper. What? But... I give up. I believe it is things that are made of solid substance but can flex, yes? Yeah, basically. Things that would seem stiff and unmoving, but actually do. Yeah. But hold on, everybody knows that chains move. It would be a bad chain if it didn't. Yeah, well, personal distinction plays a part in deciding if it matches the theme. Perhaps if it were a committee rather than one person. The game would really come alive then. I'm afraid the game's coming to a close. This is our last hundred metres, people. Then we'll have reached lower Condison. Oh, sir, I missed the last cluster while we were playing. An excuse for you to pilgrimage again, I would assume. Well, now it is. If I never walk another tunnel like this, I will die a happy person. Ah, this is the last of my three retirement pilgrimages. And I think it was easily the best. Because of the number night? No, it was pleasant talking with you. And yesterday with Miss Yang. I don't have many friends left from my younger days. One of the downsides of living longer, I suppose. And I guess I don't quite meet so many new people these days. Oh, that's kind of whack. You have kids though? Yes, three children, six grandchildren, seven great-grandchildren, two great-great-grandchildren, and a great-great-great-grandy. Whoa. 
Only one of my children stayed on Novi, but the others stayed in the system, so I get to see them once or twice a year. They all did well for themselves. Built great lives out there, so what more could a parent want? What more could a great-great-great-grandparent want? Exactly. Well, maybe one day I'll be back in this neck of the galaxy and we can make some new rock puns. I'll hold you to it. Musters and clusters. Oh. Damn it, I was working on clusters since Bentley said it. Yeah, the moment it came out, I was desperate to figure it out before you guys. Stone pockets and space rockets. Oh, oh my god. Oh god. Well. Justice. Hoi hoi, look who it is. Don't talk so loud, my sensor is pounding. We'll miss atmospheric ions. You back in one piece? I need to defragment my base drive, but I think so. I'll be damned. An AI with a hangover. Ugh, did we get the part? Yes, we did. The chronometer says it's been two days. I had to be in the moment for a while. It's pretty okay. So now we install the thing and fly off into the sunset? A sunset named Scarborough University, apparently. That's nice. Wake me up when we get there. <sighs> I'll be damned. Two hours and we'll be at the deep space jump. Finally, this mission is getting some legs. We will need to clear the Dallas check. Then we will be given our departure window and the jump will take us to the system one over from that of the university. Easy enough. Tillian had to get me some papers before we left Villafor, so this check should be no problemo. I've been researching the space jumps from the data pack I picked up at the last port. Some people have a reaction to it that has been equated with a hangover, but it's not particularly common. Ooh, he's hoping. <laughs> no more setbacks, no more delays. Not trying to jinx it. I just I have a good feeling this time. Sorry, sir. You what? In your ship's records, we are seeing discrepancies. Okay, what does that mean? Your records of ownership, travel history, and flight time. Well, I mean, the ship has only been mine for a couple of months. It was given to me by Tillian, Tillian Ensign. We will have to verify this. By all means, he lives on Villafort. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, if you'll just come this way, sir. Mm, why? It will take some time to get verification of your information. You'll have to wait detainment. So I'm under arrest. If we can't verify ownership of the Nova... Well, Tillian will set it straight, so... Fine. First time I've ever been in a holding cell. <sighs> Mind dressing down? It's a short bench. Then stand. <laughs> Fine. Here. These cells are usually made for two people maximum. Busy day for the Zeds, huh? Apparently so. So, what'd they skiff you for? They reckon the records for my ship have discrepancies. What, your captain doesn't ride your height about keeping them square? I'm a solo commander. Sheesh, even more reason to keep them nailed down. If they think you've been somewhere, you shouldn't. It's none of their business where I've been. It's my private property. <laughs> it's not how it works around here, boss. Not a Via Lactia. As I've been hearing. They think I've been smuggling, which ain't no small thing to be accused of either. And yet you seem unperturbed. Cause I'm innocent. They'll fleece my ship, call my captain, and I'll be back on the road before the next jump window closes. <laughs> Fair enough. What do they think you were smuggling? I don't know. Contraband, weapons, people, whatever it is smugglers smuggle. Human trafficking. That still happens too, huh? Off Blacklist planets, sure. Blacklist? Ski! You know. Planets that got cut off from Zealous. Abandoned to the cold of the universe, all on their own. Seriously? How the heck does that happen? I don't know. Break the rules and Zealous dumps you forever. And bans anyone from doing business with you. The whole planet. If the government breaks some pretty big rules? Yep. A lot of innocent people get caught in the crossfire though, you feel? Ugh. I'm Skitty by the way. Skitty Jeans. <laughs> Not your given name, I'm guessing. I'm Rhea. Is that your given name? Not technically, I guess, but I never got it officially changed back home because it was too expensive. My friend finally got it registered when he transferred the ship to me. Ugh. <laughs> Can I help you? Do you need some water for whatever's stuck in your throat? Doubt it would help me swallow the size of your privilege. Look, dude, you don't know a damn thing about me, so worry about your own business. You avert your gaze so we should too, huh? Ugh, just... Just what? Just leave it alone. Gonna make me rich, kid? Sit down, dickhead. <coughs> hey, hey, cool it! Stuart, 
Move it. Transport's here. See you around. Twat. Good for you. That guy got skiff for getting drunk and fighting at the bar. Waste of good oxygen. I'm not afraid to stand up for myself. Not these days. You took that biff to the mush like a champ. Hardly seemed like a rich kid to me. <laughs> First time I've ever been punched, actually. But I left home young, so I'm familiar with being the only one standing in my corner. I hear that. My stepmom was a total vider, you feel? Couldn't stand hanging around any longer after my 15th birthday. I was 16 when I had the balls to tell them I wasn't who they'd planned for me to be. They didn't give me the option of staying. Oh, what? You a theatre kid? <laughs> no. I'm... Well, I'm not the gender they expected of me. I was never much of a woman, and being a man never really felt like me either, so I'm just me. Just Rhea. They were mad about that? In my day, it was still a pretty hot subject of debate. Can't imagine how shocked I was to land on newer shores and discover that the standard title to greet anyone was the neutral sir. Wow. That's wild to imagine. I'm an opus too. An opus? An act of creation. A work of art. We took part in the divine action as the universe showed to us. Hmm. Though my bar's an opus too, so I assume we never got kicked out for it. That sucks. <laughs> that bothered me the least. I never seemed to satisfy any of my parents' wants and desires, so there wasn't much to lose there. So what did bother you? That my sister didn't go with me. Oh damn, you got a sister? A twin. Fraternal. Oh damn, and she chose them over you? I don't know if it's that simple, but I haven't spoken to her since. Damn bro, that's very unscucks of them. It was a long time ago. Freeing myself of the desire to make my family proud was the best thing I ever did. I've done some pretty cool stuff without them. I've got my own damn spaceship for one. None of them can say that. Very scucks, my dude. So whether or not she even noticed I'm gone, doesn't bother me. Well, you aren't exactly alone anymore, eh? How do you mean? You meant enough to someone that they gave you your own ship? Doesn't sound all that abandoned to me. Well, yeah, I guess. I also have Aaliyah. She's a friend. And now that I think about it, since meeting her, I haven't been alone even once. Bet that feels pretty good. Yeah, pretty damn good actually. So where are you heading, once your ship is cleared? Hmm? Oh, um, we're going to the Scarborough University, hoping to get some info that will direct me to my long lost home planet. How'd you lose a whole planet? <laughs> it's easier than you'd think, when you include falling into wormholes as a variable. Wormhole, eh? Are those real? It's just a theory of mine. Falling into wormholes? Wow, what's that like? I... Well, I actually told everyone I didn't remember it, but who even cares anymore? It's like being pushed through a pasta strainer, only worse, like one of those metal sieves. It's like being pulled through that fine mesh sieve over and over, like the kind that all stacked up and have smaller and smaller mesh, till you swear you can feel your atoms being torn apart or screaming inside of you. It's like how I imagine the trauma of being born. You only ever knew the softened, safer version of existence, until you're forced into this sharp new place, experiencing so many new dimensions of existence that you'd never known before, being grabbed and passed around and tumbled in the suffocating black ocean current. And then it's over, and you're put back together, like a wooden crate filled with scrambled eggs. Ooh, Indeed. Well, I guess I won't add that to my bucket list then. That's certainly the advice I'd give you. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry I had to go through that. Cheers. So where are you heading after you get sprung? Back to business as usual. I'm part of a courier fleet. Small universe. I'm a courier too, more or less. No shell! That's crazy, eh? How the universe lines up sometimes? Star-crossed couriers. Alright, Nova, you're free to go on your way. What? Already? Everything's been cleared up with the previous owner. Seeds are pretty efficient when they feel like it, eh? I guess so. What about you? Eh, yeah, they'll clear me soon enough. Ain't got no evidence against me, after all. You want me to call someone for you? Nah, it's all good, boss. See you around, just Rhea. See you around, skitty jeans. Ah, <sighs> god damn, I hate zealous workers. I'm back. Hey, all done and dusted. We're all sorted? Apparently so. I guess I'm not surprised zealous can send messages around the galaxy faster than us mere mortals. Speak for yourself. I'm theoretically immortal. Huh, I never thought about that. We're receiving instructions to head to the gate for departure. Alrighty then, Scarborough University, here we come. Knock on wood. Why do you do that? No actual wood. No, I mean, do superstitious rituals actually provide any sense of satisfaction? I don't think I'm qualified to answer that. Rhea, can I ask, why you never told me about coming to the present day via a wormhole? I've told you that before. No, I mean, you told Skitty that it was an extremely unpleasant experience for you. Wait, I thought you were hibernating. I was. I just checked the unit's backlogs is all. You ran through your whole hibernation in the last two minutes. At the speed that I processed data. Right, of course. 
You know that I view the backlogs. Yeah, no, that isn't what I'm reacting to. I guess I forgot you would listen back. Why didn't you want me to know it? I didn't exactly want to keep it hidden from you or anything. It's something else that haunts you. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess I just never really wanted to talk about it. But you felt comfortable telling Skitty. I don't know, it's hard to explain. Skitty is family, and I can be a chronic oversharer when I feel comfortable with someone. Even someone new who I've never met before. Skitty is family? <laughs> Not actual family, it's slang meaning other people that are queer too. Oh. I believe I understand. Time has also passed. It's not so fresh anymore. The memory is a little softer around the edges. We have a couple hours to kill during the jump. I could ask some questions if you want. I know you already have a list. I do. And I would appreciate that. I'm busy. What is it? You asked me to keep an eye out? Well, I think I found them. Finally. Finally.